Hello, I'm John Hartledge. Welcome to my channel. This episode, we are going to go to Portugal because I got to tell you, port does not always mean sweet. Ha! Let's chat wine. Portugal, in this case, the area of Lisboa. Lisboa, the Portuguese name for Lisbon, also the home of the capital of Portugal. But it just so happens this wine growing region, the farthest west of Europe, into the Atlantic, on the coastline, maritime influence, all those beautiful salt winds. And Portugal, classically, in the United States, we hear the name, the word port. Oh, let's have a port wine. Let's have something from Portugal. Usually means it's sweet. Well, there's a very good reason for that. The Britons, at one point, were boycotting French reds. So they said, all right, we'll get our red wine elsewhere. Well, this is a farther trip down the coast from England. So they went down to Portugal and they had red wine from Portugal, but they found, we go back to England, it doesn't taste the same because it sat in those ships and banged around in the heat and it got oxidized. So I said, what are we gonna do? Okay, let's put extra alcohol in it. So they found a way to make sweet wine that still had wine character, but it also had extra alcohol. Great, we'll definitely do some work on Portuguese uh, sweet wines. It's a huge, beautiful history, great story. But Portugal has been making great table red wine for a long time, and this is one of them. So Lisbon, uh, actually the, the area of Lisbon uh, is actually the second largest or the second oldest city in Europe. You thought it was Rome, didn't you? It predates Rome, Italy, by 400 years, making it number two. Athens, Greece is the oldest uh, civilization uh, in Europe. Really cool. So let's pour a little of this. Now this is a blend. Again, the art of the blend. That is so European. Uh, the one Portuguese classic grape, Torriga Nacional. That's a lot in there. There's a little Shiraz in this. And there's also a grape called Alacante Busquet. Well, you can pronounce it in many different ways. Uh, it's used uh, primarily in France, but also in uh, Portugal. So now this promises, even at 13%, standard European table wine, alcohol by volume. With this color, look at that against the white shirt. Wow, this promises to be uh, a pretty full bodied, a very densely flavored wine. Again, $10 price point. So finding really good value. Let's see what happens with the taste. Mm, yeah, a little light on the nose, but this is 2015, this has had a four years in the bottle uh, to kind of, you know, express itself, maybe three years in the bottle. Mm. Mm. So, this has some richness, but it also has spice and also has structural tannin. I've said that before. Structural tannin, I mean, it doesn't dry the mouth out, but it gives the wine kind of a, kind of a, um, uh, a definition, if you will. It's a little bit of little bit of acidity, but enough to get through some fat or marbling in, in a piece of meat. Now, let's go to Bernoulli's principal, through the Venturi, the famous gurgle. Yeah. <laughs> Set that aside. That wasn't so much a giggle as just a like an evil anticipation of something that's really good. <laughs> So it definitely opened the nose up a little bit. Um, smooth notes, and I'm getting a little more of that bowl of black fruit. It's a wine that does not taste like it's from America. It does not taste even like it's from France. It has a, a distinct, uh, 
uh, structure and flavor, even different than Spanish wine. It is distinctive. This is Portuguese red. Lisbon, the capital, steeped in history, ocean influence. At $10, one of the better wines that I've tasted in the past few weeks and the past few episodes for an overall, sit it on the table, pour it in the glass, I'm loving this even before the food arrives, I'm gonna love it more with the food and a lot of different foods. So it's not easy to find wines at the $10 price point that hit all of those aspects. And I think we did it here. And I think they did it here. So this is Patamar Lisboa Reserva Red Blend. And I would trust another vintage, the 2016. I would trust another vintage just based on, on, uh, on what, I'm, what I'm reading and researching about uh, this area and their, uh, and their winemaking. It's excellent. And this is a great example. Listen, come see me again and let's chat wine.